What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I have in my shop currently a brand new 2022, I guess, I guess it's 2022, uh, Ford Bronco. This is the Badlands edition, has the hard top. Um, incredible car, really, really cool. I think that everyone can agree Ford did a fantastic job paying homage to the original Broncos and creating this thing that just looks incredible. Very sporty, very off-road driven, and just a really, really cool new vehicle that's out on the road. Now, although they went with a kind of a heritage feel for the looks of this thing, I think that everyone knows the quality of materials and vehicles from back in the 60s till now, it's kind of, well, obviously it got better and then it's kind of been on a downward slope. Um, carpets and things like that are getting much, much cheaper feeling. Um, just kind of overall, lots more plastic on cars than there used to be. And this one's no different in the plastic range. All the fender flares, obviously the top, all that kind of stuff is all plastic. So what I wanna do in this video is do a full walk around and kind of give a detailer's perspective on this Bronco. That way, if you are a professional detailer and you have one coming into your shop or you're doing a mobile job, you can kind of know what to expect. Or if you're lucky enough to have one of these beautiful Broncos, um, this will hopefully give you some ideas and tips on how to clean and maintain your Bronco so it's always looking its best. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the exterior of this vehicle. Obviously, like I said, lots of plastic. So all these fender flares are all plastic. Mirrors are plastic. Full engine cowling, plastic. Uh, the roof, obviously plastic, this is the hard top uh, variant. The A, uh, sorry, the B pillars are plastic. Uh, the door handles are plastic. The window trim is a soft plastic. Uh, one thing I don't like about these guys, these just right off the bat so you guys can see, is it's got this track in here which collects a lot of dirt and debris. Now I did, when I washed this thing, I did go over with a soft brush. Um, let me go ahead and grab the brush for you. So I was using one of these super, super soft brushes. This one in particular is from Adams. Uh, Max Shine makes them. There's a bunch of different brands. I'll have some linked down in the description for you guys. But basically when you're washing this, this was a lot worse than it is now. I mean, you can still see some stuff in there, but it was way, way worse. Um, and now it's just kind of bleached out or stained from what was sitting in there. So, but when you're washing this thing, you're soaping it down, you already foamed it, and you go in with the brush and you agitate all this stuff so that when you rinse it away, you're getting the majority of it out. I am gonna have to go back in here and dress this up. Again, this is a soft, soft rubberized plastic. So you could, I mean, if I were to take my fingernail across, it's gonna scratch it. So um, you wanna be careful with that stuff. This. Also, when you're using your uh, soap, make sure it's pH balanced. If your soap is not pH balanced, it can potentially stain these and kind of bleach them out. So be cautious of that, especially with this whole thing. Since there's so much plastic on it, be careful of all that. Moving right along to the hard top. Um, as you can see, there's already some scuffs in this thing. And th th this actually ran all the way across previously. It came out during the wash. I'm gonna see if I can get some more, some more of that out. But this, is textured plastic. You can see it right there. Uh, it is, I mean, it looks great. It's just longevity wise for me, uh, when you're, especially if you're gonna be off-roading this thing, if you're going through any sort of brush and it hits this, it's gonna scratch it and you're not gonna be able to polish it out because it is a plastic. So keep that in mind, just be very, very careful. Now, when I'm ceramic coating this vehicle, obviously I'm gonna do all the paint, but I am gonna come across and do the plastics as well. I'm gonna be using OptiCoat, um, and that product is designed to go on all surfaces. Now with plastic surfaces like this, you do wanna make sure to do multiple coats so that it, it fills in any of, the, any of the pores so that you do that first coat, kind of locks it all in, and then a second coat adds that full blown protection. So along with the top of the roof, um, I'm gonna be doing all of this plastic as well, just touching up everything I can because especially here in San Diego, we get a lot of the little yellow dots on cars, I mean, you can be detailing on a car and then five minutes later they're covered in it. And I think it's bee pollen or something like that that just lands on cars and it's pretty annoying. So you wanna make it as easy as you can to remove that stuff. So that's why I'm gonna be ceramic coating everything on here. Okay, back to the, we're on the other side of the car now, we're on the driver's side and back to the hard top. Um, just little quality control things. There's a little divot here in the material. Um, and then there's a little, I don't know if you can see it in here right now actually, there's a little wave right here too, right there, vertically. And then also the top right here, you can see some fiberglass sticking out still. So I'm gonna remove that for the customer, get that all cleaned up. But um, just quality control could be you know, slightly better. I, but overall, this thing is incredible and I really, really like it. Now, looking at the wheels, tires, obviously this is all pretty standard. These wheels look great. 
tires are just a nice BFG all-terrain. If you're interested on how to properly dress these, I did a video on that and how to use a brush to get in all these little grooves so you get a nice clean finish. Um, I'll have that link down in the description below for you guys. Um, on the rear wheel well in the arch here, it is plastic. So relatively easy to clean. You can see there's still some stuff up here. I'll, I'll get that all, all um, addressed later. Um, but the rear is plastic. The front, however, unfortunately for, I don't know, I don't like it. I guess they probably do it for sound deadening, but it's kind of that, it's material. It's like a carpeted material, which if you're off-roading this thing, that's gonna get nice and muddy and it's a little bit harder to get stuff out of this than it is just on the plastic. So. Um, from a user standpoint, from a detailer standpoint, that's a little bit of a bummer, but I do get it for the most part. If you're using this thing just as your daily driver, that probably sound deadens and I'm sure there's a reason that they did that. So, um, I'll let that one slide. Okay. Now let's go ahead and jump onto the interior of this and look at that. Now this one is specked out really nicely. So this one has carpet. From what I understand, I was looking at the spec sheets online and I guess most of them or I don't know, from what I saw online, you can get it with just a rubberized uh, floor and with drain plugs, so you can actually rinse it out. Good job on that Ford, very, very good. So if you're getting it in there and you're getting all muddy, then there's your option, you just rinse it out, it's very nice. Uh, it does come with floor mats, but this one is spec differently, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of the Bronco Badlands Edition. You can see the nice large screen. This one is equipped with a seven speed manual. Well, six speed with a crawl option and then also reverse. So very, very cool. Uh, nice switches everywhere. Everything looks pretty premium, except it is all plastic. Like everywhere is plastic. Um, even, even this whole textured piece along the dash it's nice, it has a texture to it, if I can get it to focus, uh, there you go. But it is just plastic. Now, one thing I can mention, as, as someone who does car detailing for the last 16 years, and I also do interior repairs for some dealerships, with some plastics, like on doors, like this one, I'll go ahead and spin you around and show you, this basic textured pattern is very easy to repair. You can heat, if you get a big scratch in there, you can heat it, it usually shrinks back in, then you can retexture it and color it and you're good to go. This, on the other hand, is very, very, very hard. It's a very hard texture to match. So keep that in mind. Just be very, very careful with this stuff. You don't want it to get damaged um, because it will be hard to repair. Now, along the front fascia of the, of the uh, console area or dash area here, again, just more plastic. Bronco lettering there, very nice. All these grips are kind of uh, are rubberized and uh, have a nice, nice feel to them, nice little grip, but again, um, this material is one of those ones where if you run a microfiber on it, it can pull some of the microfiber fibers out and leave it on there. So you just want to be very, very careful. Let's move on to the roof of this thing. Now, again, you do have the carpeted, carpeting up here, probably for sound deadening. It's going to do a good job there. Um, I'm all fine with that. This material is not the best at all. This will hold a lot of stuff. So keep that in mind. However, it's up on the roof, so it's really not a big deal. Let's go down to the bottom though and your floor mats are pretty standard. They're a decent material, they feel fine, just like a, kind of like a F-150, Ford Edge, all that kind of stuff, Ford uh, uh, Explorers. Very, very similar material for that. Let me go ahead and pop these out. Now, the material under is not so nice. It is, now it's, I take that back, it's nice, it's fine, from a detailer's perspective, this stuff holds everything. You gotta think, at least for me in San Diego here, these things are gonna be at the beach, they're gonna be getting sand, they're gonna be getting dirt. And this stuff is nearly impossible to get things out of. Dog hair will stick to this like crazy. crazy. It's almost like the reverse side of Velcro and it's not the best. Um, it's thicker than some of the other ones I've seen in the past, so it's got a decent pile to it, but it will want to hold everything. So again, I would recommend Probably just opting to go and get some all weather mats for these things right away, just so you're making sure to preserve all that if you got the carpeted option. All right, jumping into the rear seats now and more of the same. So we have the same door paneling here. Now I wanted to mention one thing about these doors. If you look, I'm gonna try and, there you go. It's picking up the grain there. And this material is interesting. It's nice, I like that. This one down here is different. And this just reminds me of um, kind of a, like, 
the upholstery at like a, a hospital or a doctor's office. And so that, I mean, just doesn't seem super premium. It's probably as weather resistant as you're gonna get and that's probably why they went with that. But you're gonna wanna make sure you can keep this condition because it can dry out over time and crack and all that kind of stuff. So do your best to keep those looking nice. Now back around the rear of the vehicle, let's go ahead and open up the door. And we just have more of the same back here. So let's go ahead and open that, open that up and this as well, just like a Jeep. And here's more of that material in the back. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about on the front of the vehicle, this is basically the same material that they're using throughout the whole vehicle. If you have a vehicle now and you can vacuum up your, your seats, um, the floors around your seats and all that kind of stuff, and then when you go around to the back, you, have, you notice that you have a really hard time getting things out of the carpet. Well, that's what I'm talking about. This thing is all of this material throughout the whole vehicle. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, again, probably recommend getting some all weather mats just to help uh, prevent anything from getting stuck in there. Alrighty guys, so that's my first just quick walk around. Now I'm gonna go ahead and polish this thing now, get it all prepped, ceramic coat it, get it all dialed in, and then I'll come back, pick up the camera and walk you guys around again, just to really explain exactly what I did throughout the interior and exterior of the vehicle. All right guys, just really quickly, I wanted to show you, I've got the first application. I'm just starting to put the ceramic coating on. Um, and this is the hood application. I did a whole cross hatch pattern, forward, backward, um, side to side. And as you can see, it's getting that nice rainbow effect. It's starting to do its thing. It's starting to flash out and now I can remove it. But I just wanted to show you guys the rainbow effect of a ceramic coating. All right guys, it's been a few hours. I've gone over the whole entire car, washed it, cleaned it, polished it, the whole nine yards, ceramic coated it, ceramic coated the plastics, uh, vacuumed out the interior. It wasn't too bad inside, obviously it's a new vehicle, uh, but I vacuumed out the interior and then put down a fabric protectant on all the carpets because like we talked about, this carpet isn't the most friendly, user friendly, as far as keeping it clean. So I wanted to do something that would make it, you know, uh, a little bit easier. I maintain this vehicle for the customer. So really it's just uh, to make it easier for myself. So if uh, you're in that similar situation, go the extra mile, do something extra for the customer. They'll be stoked. It'll make your life easier down the road. Um, if this is your own personal car and you have a Bronco or anything that has that type of material in it, um, throw some fabric protecting on it. I'll put a link down in the description below for you guys on what I like to use. You can even like, at times you can get Scotchgard in an aerosol can at Walmart and that does a decent job. It's better than having nothing on there. You wanna do it outside of the car and also let it air out just cause it does have some odor to it. Um, but let's go ahead and look over this thing. So a couple of things to note, again, up on the roof. Let me flip you guys around. So up on the roof here, um, I gotta say the ceramic took so well to this material. I was really nervous about it. I didn't think it was gonna be very good. Um, but over all of the black plastics, as you can see, they just look amazing. And I used a super plush uh, microfiber uh, applicator pad. Let me grab one for you. My little snack bin. But here's the applicator pad I used. I just applied the ceramic on this and started going over the whole surface of the, uh, of the plastics. And I was able to just kind of go back and forth. And while I was applying it, it was buffing out and turning out absolutely perfect. So I did do two coats on all the plastics just to make sure that I'm sealing up all the pores and then giving it the full blown protection so it's 100% connected and, and doing its job properly. Um, so I did the engine cowling and everything else. Now the paint, as you can see, is pretty, pretty. It looks fantastic. The ceramic coating again went on there really, really nicely. Um, this thing's gonna be much, much easier to maintain moving forward. You can see the wheel wells are all good. Wheels and tires are looking perfect. Now guys, I do have a whole bunch of videos on how to properly maintain your car. I know this one isn't step by step. It's more just touching base on the materials within the new Bronco and how to take care of them and what to 
err on the side of caution with um, as far as it getting scratched and things like that. So if you want to see like a full step-by-step -step process on how I wash cars, I have a video for that. I'll link down in the description. Also how to dress up these all-terrain tires without getting fling uh, when you drive away. Got a video on that as well. Um, but back to the Bronco here. The only thing I have left guys is the windows. Um, I haven't done that yet. It's late, it's 6.28 on a Saturday and I gotta get home to the kids. But as you can see, the interior came out phenomenal. Let me see if I can bump this up for you guys so you can see a little bit better. But here's the interior. Now, guy, yeah, okay, I have to say, I was a little hesitant of these materials. However, they cleaned up phenomenally well. Like, just crazy well. Obviously, it's a brand new car. There was some, definitely some smudges and stuff on it, but um, it was a brand new car, so I didn't have to go crazy and agitate and everything. If it was dirtier, I would just take a, a, an interior uh, degreaser, all-purpose cleaner, agitate it first, get it all cleaned up, and then apply my protectant. In this case, I did not use what I talked about in the very beginning. I actually used my favorite paint sealant, um, which is ceramic detail spray from Technician's Choice. Now, I love that product so much because it flashes, it's so easy to apply to the exterior of a vehicle. It flashes out perfectly and it does a phenomenal job of adding water beading and UV protection. Now, it's off label. It doesn't say to use that stuff on interiors, but I use it all the time on interiors and it does an amazing job. As you guys can see, everything is looking absolutely fantastic. And you can see the carpets and everything are all good to go. The leather is all treated, looks beautiful. Um, but so back to the ceramic detail spray, I like that stuff so much because it flashes out so well. So all I did was uh, spray it onto a microfiber towel, got it decently saturated, not crazy. Started rubbing everything out, all the little finger marks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're able to rub out because the microfiber towel and then it flashes out to a perfect finish. It's leaving behind UV protection. It's amazing. I love that stuff. Um, again, that's an off label use of it, but it works and it does a really, really great job. Hey guys, actually one more thing I wanted to show you on this Bronco, I totally forgot um, to show you this, but again, on these little win uh, window trim, I remember I showed you all the kind of dirt and everything that settles in there. Um, let me flip you guys around and show you just how perfect it is now. You can see there's no more dirt in there, it's all good to go. And basically all I did was roll down the windows and then this piece you can kind of pivot over and you can clean, you just pull it out and start cleaning all the way through. So. A nice easy option there uh, for something that's a kind of a design, uh, I don't know, it's just a pain that dirt settles in there, but um, it's all good to go. So that is that. And so now last but not least, I have the rear spare tire. I took it off so I could ceramic the whole back area, but I got this thing all dressed up, uh, looking perfect. And the wheel itself is all protected as well. So that pretty much will do it. Um, again, I'm heading home, I'm done for the night. Uh, I'll be back, this isn't going back to the customer. It's all applied now. It's gonna cure for the next 24 hours and I'll be taking it back to the customer. Tonight's, today's Saturday night, I'll take it back Monday and uh, it should be all protected and good to go. So very impressed. Actually, it, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I wasn't so sure, again, I wasn't so sure about the interior materials of this Bronco, all the plastics, but the fact that the ceramic coating took to these plastics so well um, again, I used OptiCoat, but I did test the panel using MacShine's graphene coating, and it worked almost easier. Actually, it was easier. I don't know about, you know, it, it, it rubbed in really, really well. So um, another thing with the MacShine stuff is on paint, you can let it flash out for so long um, and, and still buff it out pretty easily. So that's a fantastic product. I'll have everything linked down in the description for you guys. Again, if you're wanting to know exactly how my wash process, those videos will be linked in the description too. So that's it, I'm out of here guys. Uh, please make sure to like the video, make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell. I appreciate all of you, have a great weekend, see ya.